I'm out on a little half-day excursion this afternoon on BLM land to the southwest of Eugene. I turned off of Territorial Highway onto Wolf Creek Road just south of Crow, then followed Panther Creek Road up into the network of logging roads crisscrossing these steep hills and valleys. In Western Oregon hills, you don't often find the challenging dirt and rock roads common in Central and Eastern Oregon, in part due to road building regulations designed to protect streams and the salmon and other wildlife that rely on them. Roads originally built for heavy log trucks and other lumber equipment need to have well compacted beds to prevent excess silt runoff clogging fragile watersheds. Most of the forests I'll drive through today are second or third growth after previous timber harvests over the past century. These small, immature Douglas fir trees you see will need to grow another 30 to 50 years before they are ready for a new cutting. Ironically, here where we get consistently rained on nine months out of the year, you won't find any water crossings. Bridges or culverts are required elements to keep streams clean. The occasional mud puddle is the only place your rig will be getting its feet wet. While exploring western Oregon hills often ends up being just a long drive through dense forest with no view other than the trees right in front of you, keeping a sharp eye out for openings to hike through can yield interesting views most people will never see. Hmm, it's a Monday afternoon, but I've still managed to run into someone else poking around up here. I think it's hunting season? I may have picked the wrong day to walk around in the woods wearing my deerskin jacket. I've got my axe with me, as always, but this is no problem for the forester. Let's see your big ol' Mercedes Sprinter get past this, Mr. Van Life guy. Wow, this is just beautiful. This is not. This is an unfortunately common sight on Oregon's public lands that are closer to populated areas. It's maddening. I always end up picking up some litter during my excursions, but dump sites like this require preparation for a dedicated cleanup effort. Despite the garbage marring the landscape back there, there's still plenty of pristine nature to enjoy out here. We're just getting the first rains after a long dry summer, and it's like the forest is coming back to life. The ferns have perked up, the mosses are swelling with new life, the leaves of the big leaf maple just turning to autumn yellow are varnished to a high gloss by the drizzle, and the endless dug fir glistens with a billion sparkling dewdrops perched in the needles like a fortune in diamonds refracting the light of the misty sky.
I always like to check out these little dead-end spurs, which you find branching off from the gravel roads. Well, here I'm just exploring a little side spur just to see where it goes. Many of the little unmarked spurs that are little used end in a dispersed camping site, kind of like this. A lot of times these sites don't really have any sort of view or features or water. They're just down at the end of a road like that, but very, very secluded. I probably drove about a quarter mile off the main road to get down to this site. This little hilltop up here obviously has been logged. It definitely sort of makes a scar in the landscape, but also it opens up the view. These areas are usually planted with new seedlings. Those trees right there were probably replanted, I'm gonna guess 10 years ago? It's now almost uh, 6 p.m. The light is fading, but it's not a huge drive back to town, so I'm in no real hurry. I'm gonna just keep exploring until it gets dark. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. I just saw a sign for Sayus La Falls. I had no idea I'd come this far. I've never been here before. Time to air up and head home. Mm -hmm.